Whether you have an existing workstation like this one or you're starting from complete scratch, follow this guide and by the end of it, you'll have a fantastic budget gaming PC that will last you for years to come. No matter what your budget is, you can build a gaming PC. In fact, my friend Budget Builds Official built one for just 25 pence. A budget gaming PC for roughly £100 is definitely possible, and you'll easily be able to play older and esports titles. But for today's video, our example system will be this unit, which cost roughly £200. The trick to this? It's to search used marketplaces such as Facebook Marketplace and eBay for used office desktops like this one. <laughs> Ideally, you want to be looking for a full-size desktop, aka not one of those slim desktops, as that will make hunting down a graphics card much, much harder. So where do you look? I find the best way to find a good deal is by using Facebook's Marketplace feature. Though, that's not a viable option for everyone, so I recommend using whichever second-hand Marketplace apps and websites you're most familiar with. You should allocate roughly 50% of your total PC budget towards this base unit, and this should include everything you need to get a fully functional PC. Not a fully functional gaming PC, but a fully functional PC. The remaining 50% should be spent on upgrades, but before you rush out and buy any old Dell desktop, you'll need to aim for the following specs in any PC that you buy. Number one, you'll need a decent CPU. I recommend looking for a CPU from Intel no older than Ivy or Sandy Bridge. That really is the limit here. It's also important to try and aim for a CPU with four cores minimum. If a seller doesn't list which CPU is inside, ask them for more information before pulling the trigger. You really don't want to get this bit wrong. You can also check the number of cores a CPU has on Intel's website. A CPU which can often be found in these office PCs is the i5-4460. It's a pretty decent CPU which will be great for a build like this. It's important to get this step right as correcting it later on can cost a lot. If you're unsure on the CPU in the PC you're looking at is good or not, then click the link in the description to join the RMD Tech Discord server where myself and other subscribers will be more than happy to give you all the help that you need. The second thing to be looking for is RAM capacity. Realistically speaking, at the bare minimum, you need 8GB of RAM for a gaming PC. Under no circumstances should you go any lower. Aim for at least 8GB, as even for a budget system, this should be easily possible. Heck, if you look hard enough, it should be easy enough to find something with 16GB of RAM these days. Number 3 is storage. Any PC you buy should have a minimum of a 500GB hard drive, because correcting this will start to eat into our graphics card budget. That will ensure enough space for at least a couple of games, as well as some programs and a Windows installation. Sometimes you'll get lucky and a listing may even have a cheap 120GB SSD in it, but bear in mind you will need to buy an additional hard drive to support this, as a 120GB SSD on its own will not be enough storage space to store games as well as Windows and all your applications. If you consider yourself to be a complete novice, then don't worry, this guide is still for you. For starters, you can simply join the RMD Tech Discord community where I'll be more than happy to help you out, but in addition to that, I've got a really cool trick that not many people know about. This trick is an easy way to check if an office desktop is reasonably modern, and that's to look out for USB 3.0 ports. They'll usually be blue in colour in comparison to the black USB 2.0 ports. It's not a perfect solution, not by a long shot, but if you can't see any blue USB ports, then it might be worth skipping over this PC. Once you've got the PC in hand, you want to start by giving it a clean. You don't want to be working in a dirty PC, even if it is your own dirt. So start as you mean to go on and give it a quick dusting. Now you're ready to begin the upgrades, and this is where things start to get really interesting. So I would recommend allocating only 50 to 60% of your budget on this tower. The remaining 50 to 40% should be spent on upgrades. You'll need to add a graphics card for starters, as chances are, even if the desktop you bought came with one, it won't be capable of modern gaming. So a graphics card is where most of our remaining budget will go. But also consider investing in an SSD and power supply. A 120GB or 240GB 2.5 inch SSD is perfect for a system like this on a budget. I've linked them in the description below, you can pick them up on Amazon really cheap. Now it's important not to buy an M.2 SSD, as the majority of these older desktop systems do not support it. At this point, all your spare pennies should be ploughed into your graphics card. The graphics card that's best for you will be determined by the power requirements just as much as the price, and that's something that many people forget when reusing one of these old Dell desktops. 
the power requirements are incredibly important to keep track of. I usually start out by looking at the power supply of the system and determining how much wattage I already have spare. In most cases, you can do this by putting all the existing components of the PC into an online wattage calculator. A good example of this is linked below. You can then usually find the wattage of your power supply written on the side of the unit. In my case, 300 watts is simply not enough unless I plan on going for a GPU without external power requirements like this GTX 1650. But not everyone knows that the PCIe connector here can provide 75 watts of power, but if your GPU needs more than that, then it will have external power connectors like these. So assuming that like me, you'll need to buy a new power supply, I recommend allocating roughly 30 pounds as a flat fee and just buying the best possible used power supply that you can. Brands like Corsair, EVGA or Seasonic are all reputable and you should try to go for something like that. FSP also make very generic looking power supplies, but don't be fooled by this because they also are very reliable and often much cheaper than the more consumer orientated brands. In fact, many power supplies from reputable brands like Antec, Thermaltake and Zalman are actually just made by FSP and then rebranded to fit their consumer lines. So if you find an FSP power supply on eBay with the correct connectors and wattage, then I wouldn't rule it out. Again, this process can be quite confusing if you're a novice, so feel free to join the RMD Tech Discord community if you do need any help. So that's power sorted. That really just leaves us with the graphics card to go. But before we get to the graphics card, a quick word from Comp City Giveaways, because if you're watching this video, you'll likely be up for a bargain. So why not go check out Comp City Giveaways? They've run hundreds of raffles which allow you to win top tier PCs and PC hardware at a fraction of the usual retail price. And you can use my code RMDTech10 for 10% off today. Link in the description below. Okay, back to the graphics card. Now this is just a process of elimination. Work out exactly how much you have left to spend. Then it's just a case of browsing eBay and Facebook Marketplace until you find a good deal that fits within your power requirements. In my case, I stumbled across this R9290 for just £85 in eBay. In fact, I did an entire video on it, and if you're interested, you can watch that up here. As usual, I recommend looking for older flagship AMD cards like the one I have here. They have aged really well and are usually cheaper than their Nvidia counterparts. Though it's important to know that cards like the R9290 that I'm using are no longer supported by AMD, and that means they won't be getting any new drivers. But that's not the end of the world because we already know that Windows 10 drivers work on Windows 11, so even if you do buy one of these GPUs, you'll be able to use it for many years to come. If you want some good examples of graphics cards that I think are good matches for these systems, then I'd look for the following examples. The R9 290, R9 390, R9 380, RX 470, RX 570, GTX 1050 Ti or GTX 960 4GB variant. Now that's certainly not an exhaustive list, but it gives you a good few options to start with. And if you're not sure how they'll perform, there are hundreds of videos available for free on YouTube, benchmarking these graphics cards in different games, so why not check out one of those and you should get a decent idea of the performance that you can expect. So then, let's take a look at a real life example. This tower here cost £90 and included an i7-2600 4-core 8-thread CPU, 8GB of RAM, two 500GB hard drives, a USB adapter card, a cheapo AMD graphics card that we can just throw away and disregard, as well as all the other basic components required to get up and running. As mentioned previously, I then grabbed a slightly better power supply that will allow us to install our graphics card and meet its power requirements. This power supply cost £15 on Amazon Warehouse and I also picked up a 120GB SSD for our boot drive. That was another £15. And finally, the graphics card, an R9 290. That took up another £85 of our budget, bringing our total spend to £205. And for that price, we have what would have been considered a top tier gaming PC just 8 short years ago. So whilst it certainly won't be shredding 144 4K in modern AAA titles, it certainly will be perfect entry level gaming system for the budget conscious gamer. And that's all of our components picked out. Congratulations, you just parted together a budget gaming PC using either an existing workstation desktop or a bought one. Now there are a few things that you can do if you have some time and money left over. Local marketplaces will often have people giving away used PC cases which you can use to spice up the looks of a budget gaming PC. I went out for instance and found this generic green case on Facebook Marketplace for absolutely nothing. You can also upgrade your CPU cooler and chassis fans to branded versions for quieter and cooler operation. 
This can be done relatively inexpensively, so could be a worthwhile upgrade if your PC is getting particularly noisy and you have some leftover budget. So after spending all of this time and money, what actually was the benefit? Well, the original HD 5450 that was in this PC wasn't exactly the fastest graphics card on the planet. In fact, I did a video on it back in 2019 showing just how bad the performance is. But with all of our upgrades, we can now safely say that the PC is much more responsive and snappy, and gameplay is significantly smoother and, well, games actually run on it now, so that's a big upgrade. We've gone from a standard office desktop PC to an entry-level gaming PC, and all of that for under £200. That means that if you are on a budget like this, we're talking 100 to 200, maybe even 300 pounds, entry level PC gaming is certainly possible for you. So do not, under any circumstances, let people trick you into believing that you need to spend thousands of pounds to get into PC gaming because it's simply not true and you can actually get into PC gaming for less than it costs to get into console gaming. If after watching this video you do still have questions, then feel free to join the Discord and I'll be happy to help. Link in the description below. Hope you guys really did enjoy this video and got something out of it. If you've been able to use this to build your own gaming PC, then I'd love to hear more about it. So leave a comment in the description below and I, I really do read them all. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this video and if it helped you out. In the next time though, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace out and enjoy.